Liza Minnelli. You know, over the years in watching television, certain moments on television are um, fixed indelibly in your mind for the rest of your life. For example, Mr. Reagan's speech at the wall in Berlin, when he simply said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And hundreds of thousands of people came from the other side of the wall with their picks and their shovels and said, that's a good idea. <laughs> and they took it down. It was that easy. It was brilliant. That moment is fixed in our minds. One of the most touching moments I ever saw was at Mr. Reagan's first inauguration on television when one of the most loved actors to ever come out of Hollywood stepped before his commander-in-chief, he, a brigadier general, and saluted him. And of course, that was Jimmy Stewart. We gasped at that moment. Here to toast Mr. Reagan on this, his big birthday, is Jimmy Stewart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just 10 short years ago, I stood before a distinguished group, many of you were there, and offered a toast to our new Commander-in-Chief on the evening of his inauguration. Tonight, we're here filled with genuine appreciation and gratitude. You had a vision of our country, and we know now stand tall and strong with a renewed sense of pride. Our future is bright. You're a hero, Mr. President. And so, on the occasion of your 80th birthday, we salute you. Thank you. Mission accomplished.
I'd only thought about things like that many years ago. I'd have been twice as good in pictures. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I'm not going to make a speech here tonight. I suspect you've heard one or two of them over the years anyway. I just want to say a few words to thank you for coming to celebrate with me. I would like to clarify for the record, however, that I don't have birthdays any longer. I stopped having them quite a long time ago. I simply have anniversaries of my 39th birthday. So this is my 41st anniversary of my 39th birthday. Thank you. I have to admit that I'm rather intimidated by all the exceptional talent we've seen up here tonight. And it's tough for a guy to follow all this, particularly because so many of those who've been up here have touched on things aimed at me, beginning with, God bless her, Margaret Thatcher, that I was sitting there thinking, if I have to say anything, how am I going to get around the lump in my throat? But Seriously, uh, it's, it's tough for a guy to follow all of this. Seriously, words cannot adequately express how grateful and humbled I am by this evening. I'm once again reminded of the support and friendship of many of you in this room, friendships that I shall always treasure. I do want to report to you who have given so generously that the library building is completed. I was up there. I was up there day before yesterday with my special friend, Margaret Thatcher. It's such a breathtaking sight, and the building and grounds are truly magnificent. After finishing up the exhibits and displays over the next six months or so, we'll be ready to open to the public in November. As I look back, I'm filled with so many fond memories. I'm thankful to God for allowing me to reap so much happiness in one lifetime, for remaining beside me in times of tremendous hardship and peril, and for keeping a watchful eye on this country of ours. I would be remiss if I did not express my pride in our country at the present time. Let me just interject something here. A man sent me a letter just a few weeks before I left office. I don't know why he did, but I'm grateful to him for it. Because he just sent me a letter telling me that you can go to live in France, but you can't become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany, but you can't become a German. And he went on through Italy and uh, Greece and a great many other countries. But he said anyone from any corner of the world and come to live in the United States and become an American. I would be remiss if I didn't express my pride in our country at this present time. Having served as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, I know well the sacrifices these men and women have made to unselfishly serve their country in time of peace and war. And I would like to use this occasion to make a birthday wish. My wish is that God will watch over each and every one of our men and women who are so bravely serving in the Persian Gulf and their families wherever they may be. And may they know that we as a nation stand firmly behind them. I just want to interject something else here also. If we went through this room tonight and asked each one of you, and you would reply, what was your heritage? Where were your ancestors from? And most of us by now would have to name three or four or more countries, not just one. 
But the plain truth is the uniqueness of this country because here is the only land on earth in which there is a genuine brotherhood of man. All of us represent in our heritage all the rest of the earth and no boundaries here dividing it one from the other. And finally, I thank my own First Lady Nancy. I've always found it difficult to express fully my love for this special woman. Put simply, my life really began when I met her, and it's been rich and full ever since. Thank you all for sharing this evening with us, and God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, join us in singing God Bless America.